Tomorrow, December 7th, the 76th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Tonight, longtime Billings radio personality Lonnie Bell helps us recall that fateful day. It turns out Lonnie was one of the first to arrive in Pearl Harbor immediately after the attack, an experience that is etched in his memory forever. q Samantha Harrison has his story. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. I had been in the Navy a year and 11 days when they bombed Pearl Harbor on December the 7th. A Japanese attack upon Pearl Harbor naturally would mean war. So I went down the mess hall on the second, second deck, and they had a, a big old, big, big radio in there, you know, and, and, they had, and they had the news on it, and they were... The first thing I heard was that the Oklahoma was on fire and West Virginia was still fighting. Lonnie Bell, just about 18 at the time, was stationed in the North Atlantic, thinking he was too far away from Hawaii to worry. The next morning, our, our executive officer, our Commander Nichols, he says, I want everybody to go down on the third deck, he says, and get your uh, insurance, make sure your insurance is up to date, because we're leaving at noon for Hawaii. After weeks of travel from the far north Atlantic, through the United States, and across the Pacific, they arrived, second only to the aircraft carriers. And it was a sight to see. The Oklahoma was upside down, battleship Oklahoma, and all the other ships were. But all these battleships were sunk, and the Arizona blew up, and here's all this wreckage, you know. I tell you, when you go there and you see a battleship upside down for the first time, you just can't imagine it was something to, to see, believe me. It would make you uh, stop and think a minute, you know. Hostilities of this kind would naturally mean that the president would ask Congress for a declaration of war. Lonnie remembers a lot about those times, the people he met, the people he lost, and the unbelievable sadness engulfing the world around him. When we got to Pearl Harbor, all the women and kids had been sent back to the United States. and. It was so sad, and the, and, the, and the guys that were there, the survivors, which everybody was that was there, two or three of those guys was engaged to be married. In fact, this one, this one shipmate, his wife was already there and was going to get married. And, and that bomb, when the bomb fell, they changed all that, and they took all the women and the kids away. And those were the saddest people I ever saw in my life. I don't think I ever saw anybody any sadder than they were. Sixteen million people in uniform. And a lot of people sacrificed their lives for the World War II. I always felt that I was extremely lucky. And I always thanked the, the good Lord that I made. Samantha Harrelson, MTN News. Quite the story. Thank you, Samantha. And thank you, Alani, for sharing that with us. Now, in honor of Pearl Harbor Day, tomorrow there is a special program on tap at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel. The program begins at noon with a color guard display and an opening prayer. World War II veterans buried at the National Cemetery will also be recognized during that ceremony. And the program will close with a volley, a playing of taps, and a prayer. Also an observation of the National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day, Governor Steve Bullock has ordered flags in Montana to be flown at half-staff tomorrow in honor of the American Patriots who lost their lives on that fateful day 76 years ago tomorrow.